Okay. Looks like we got a mystery package today. Something I ordered. Looks like it was a little bit crushed in the mail. Let's uh let's put some scissors here. Oh wait. Let's see what's inside of here. Looks like a crushed box that's been heavily taped. Okay. Of fun. Ooh, look at this. It is our new voltmeter. Okay, that's good. Looks like we have a USB charging cable and some clippy type probes, my favorite type. Love uh, roach clips. And, um, even though the box was crushed, it looks like our little, uh, did I say voltmeter? This is a, an oscilloscope. Oh, yes, because our other one, I burnt out the front end on it. Putting too much voltage into it, I guess. I didn't mean to. Well, let's try charging this thing up, and we'll test her out. That should be exciting. Oh, look. That came with a manual. Oh gosh. Oh. Okay. That'll be good. This will replace the other one because <clears throat> I like to have a little handy held held a uh, oscope so I can uh, do tests on that while well, I'm using my other oscope for other things. So there's our oscope. Should be interesting. We'll have to test that out. Okay. Okay, here's the manual for, uh, I guess it's called the DNOFNIRSI Pro, a good test tool. Okay, and uh, let's just see what's inside of here. I guess it uh, just kind of folds out. Okay, and here's the front page. And it's claiming it's a 5 megahertz scope with 20 mega samples. Okay, so 5 megahertz bandwidth, 20 mega samples, um, mega ohm impedance, fairly standard stuff. Okay, you can store 500 waveforms. Okay. Anyway, and there are some of the specs. Okay. I guess we got some stuff on the back too. Okay, so let's get our scope plugged in here. It looks like we can plug this into the USB port of a computer or phone charger or whatever. And here I have a uh, special USB. This is not a normal USB cable. It's, it's longer at the end. And uh, here's the port on the bottom of this guy. So let's see if we can plug that in. Okay. Okay, so we got the guy plugged in. I'll just let it charge for a while. It doesn't have any indications of charging, but okay. We'll get him charged up and then we'll test that one out. It'd be nice to have another portable oscope since I fried the front end of my yellow one. Okay. Let's we'll see how this one works. Okay, so this has been charging for a while and uh, let's unplug the charger and we'll turn the thing on. There's a little switch on the bottom and it looks like it's doing something. Let's hook up, we have the probes here, we'll hook them up to the DNC on the top and maybe we'll try to measure some signals see if we can get this thing to work. Okay. Okay, we have this thing hooked up to our signal generator up here 
and uh, it's set to about one megahertz right now. And uh, let's try twiddling with the frequency. Okay, that's about four megahertz there. Four megahertz, four, almost five megahertz, and you can change the scale by pushing these arrows left or right and it looks like about five megahertz the uh, signal starting to get rounded off and I can't go up any faster than a uh, oh see it says 4.9 megahertz okay let's go up to see if we can go up to 10 okay it looks like 10 is looking like it's starting to alias a little bit Looks like it's doing some kind of averaging and it's jittering around because it's aliasing. Definitely complete sine wave at uh, 10 megahertz. Okay. So, um, there we are. Oh, it's not even 10 megahertz, it's like 9.8. Or 8.9, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's nice, it measures the frequency there. Tells you the voltage peak to peak. Uh, it's triggering on, looks like an upswing, the rising of the pulse. Let's go back down and we'll see where, when exactly it starts to look. Okay, so that's less rounded off. That's about 2 megahertz right there. 2.1 megahertz. And looks like our scope is doing a good job of measuring that. Okay. So that's probably about where the bandwidth is, somewhere around there, a couple megahertz maybe. About three megahertz, it's looking pretty rounded there. That's three megahertz. Okay. So I, I guess it's kind of a nice scope. I'm going to fiddle around with it a little bit to see what some of these other uh, options are. See what we can do with it. Okay. But it's a uh, nice portable, you know, hold it in your hand, look at that, it's got nice clip leads to, so you can hook it up to your experiments, measures the frequency, measures the voltage peak to peak, what more could you ask for, huh? Very nice, huh? Okay, so let's check out some of the functionality of the scope. We have some number pads down here in a menu key and I have it hooked up to a one megahertz source on my signal generator and it looks like it's going too fast now so let's hit this right arrow and as I do that it changes the uh, the time display up here let's set this up a little bit okay so this arrow zooms in on the signal and time and we can push this other arrow to uh, make the signal uh, smaller would that be yeah that'd be smaller uh, per division oh, it doesn't show the per division up here anyway anyway you can make the signal bigger by going like that so you're actually actually this would be smaller per division because it's showing less of the signal and this would be uh, larger uh, uh, time per division. Okay. And uh, here you have the up arrows. We can make the signal larger or smaller in amplitude. Okay, I guess that's the smallest we can go. Again, it doesn't say what the per division is. Okay. And there it's clipped. But, okay. Okay, so that's, uh, what, 14 volts? Let, let me um, bring down the uh, signal amplitude, and we'll see how small of a signal we can measure. Okay. Okay, so that's about, saying it's 1 volt peak to peak. So that's nice, it gives you the volt peak to peak and the frequency that it measures automatically. It looks like it's measuring that properly. Let me go to a lower scale. I think I have a, uh... Okay, there. 
There, I knocked it down. Okay. And so that's about 215 millivolts peak to peak. And it looks like we can measure even smaller signals. Let's see if I can knock this down. I guess that's the smallest signal my, um, let's see. That's the smallest signal my signal generator can generate. But it looks like we can measure, um, I guess that's about the limit there. Okay. So, full scale, about 200 millivolts is the limit of what we can measure on, on this uh, scope. So, uh, we also have this, uh, there's an AC-DC coupling. You can change that. Okay, see if we look up here on the top, it's AC-DC. Okay, and one, one ten, 1X, one 10X. Okay, so I guess we put it on 10x. The signals are much, much uh, smaller. Oops, what happened? Okay, I guess we have to re-zoom in on it because it resets the uh, position where it's at. Okay, it looks like we got a trigger here, 50%. I'm not sure what that is. There's an auto set, run stop, so you can change it between auto and uh, stop stop the scope if you want to hold that trace uh, we can go to menu if you could push the menu button down here uh, okay we'll hit OK for more measurements try turning that on I don't know what that does oh I see it looks like it averages several traces if you turn that on, okay, and we can hit menu, get back out of it, and so it looks like it puts several traces over the top, and it puts a bunch of measurement stuff over here, duty, Vmax, Vmin, the RMS, average, uh, delta time, okay, so all sorts of good stuff over here. Let's turn that back off, so I hit the over arrow, turn it back off. Go back, hit the menu button, and there. Those extra measurements are off. Show cage on. Okay, I guess cage is the graticals. Let's see what happens if we turn that off. Okay, so it takes away the graticals. So they're calling the graticals the cage. So we'll turn the cage back on. Okay. Auto 50% on. What happens if we turn that off? Okay, I'm not sure what that does. <coughs> Let's turn it back on, I guess, because who knows what that does. Multi-buffer. Okay. Let's try bringing it up to 8. Okay, look at that. So it's got now 8 overlaid traces. Okay, so that's what the multi-buffer does. And let's turn it back to, let's turn it to 1 and see what happens. Okay, so now it's on 1. Okay, so now it's just a single trace. Okay. And, um, oops. Let's go down to save waveform. And when you hit that, you have an option to save or view. Calibrate night mode. What's night mode? I'll turn night mode on and see what that is. Okay, so night mode makes the trace black. Okay, and I think that's pretty much all the options here. So, very interesting, huh? Very nice little uh, handheld scope. Okay, anyway, so. Okay, there's one final thing I wanted to check on this. When you um, go into uh, menu here, so you go to menu, and then it has uh, something called save waveform. And if you go down the save waveform and you hit OK down here, you can either save or view them. So if we view them, see there's two waveforms I've saved in there. 
and I was just wondering if you can transfer them to the computer. So I plugged in this. This actually special. It's not really a USB cable. It's longer because uh, USB cables will not reach up inside of this thing. You need a special, I guess, charging cable that looks like a USB cable. And um, anyway, it's not coming up on the computer, so it's not accessing it. So let, let's just take a look. See, here is the charging cable for that guy and um, let's see if I can find a USB to compare it to so here is let's see how the charging cable is considerably longer the normal USB won't plug into that it won't fit down deep enough to plug into the socket even though they have the same cross section okay anyway so that's a little bit of a disappointment but Besides that, it seems like a pretty pretty nice scope. You can hit this button to return and go back to the, the main uh, screen. And so anyway, okay, so there is our uh, 5 megahertz oscope handheld uh, DS, was it DSO something or other? Anyway, very interesting. I think that's about all the functions in this guy. It's not too bad for uh, what we paid for it. And uh, this is uh, Dr. James, and thanks for watching.